And in this corner, we have Jerry Slugger Forrest. <laughs> Woo! All right, first things first. I saw an interview with you, and my first question is, how many times did you actually hurt yourself doing like hood karate? Because you know what I'm saying? You said you learned karate and shit, you know, back when you was in the hood in uh, Lafayette. Yeah, was that? yeah uh, that's kind of why I learned everything. Um, I don't know, man. Um, actually hurt myself? Never. Uh, I got Never? Of, I have a lot of broken bones that I didn't know about. Uh, I got hit by a car in Louisiana, like in seventh grade or some shit like that. Jeez. And, uh, yeah, when I went to a doctor, it was like I had, you know, fingers broken, collarbone was broke before and shit like that, so. How does that affect you now? Like, I mean, hands hurt, anything, um, arthritis, anything? No, nah, nothing. Nothing, you straight? Been blessed, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just, I, I personally just wanted to get that question out of the way. Oh, no, it, no, it was, no, it was plaguing me, love. you know what I'm saying? We said that was, love. looking at the interview, I was just like, ain't no way. He just, nigga just went to the dojo, came back, just taught y'all everything was good. No, no, yeah, nah, uh, not so in Louisiana. That's how we learned how to flip, um, learn how to do karate, all that. Like, uh, you know, one or two people, would, you know what I'm saying, be able to afford the class, then they come back to the hood and teach everybody. Like, we would be in a straight line. No, I can remember, like, me and my cousin was talking about this the other day. I can remember us being in a straight line, maybe 10, 15 of us throwing punches, like everybody kicking at one time, like real shit, yeah. When I older cousin just teaching everybody in the hood. Man, that's cool. Does karate in any way translate over into boxing in any way? Um, footwork, uh, depending on what, 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 what kind of combat you're in, uh, footwork, the way you operate, the way you move, it definitely plays a part. Uh, I guess you could say like more, uh, more so like Jet Li type stuff or uh, Bruce Lee, Taekwondo, um, karate. Mm -hmm. Things like that where, you, where, where you're pretty much on the balls of your feet. It's the same analogy. Ali learned, I mean, uh, what was it? Uh, how do they say Bruce Lee learned his footwork from Ali? That's, oh, that's, wow. the, that's the syndicate of how he was able to step and generate power and all of that stuff. What have you learned from Ali? Uh, um, I have one of the best jabs in, 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 in the heavyweight division, and I, I feel it's because of guys like Ali. My first coach, Bilal Abdul Muhammad, he was from Namotan, downtown Upper News. And uh, he was in camp with, with Ali a few times, and uh, that was his main thing, the jab. So uh, that's pretty much why my jab is, is a pretty obsolete jab. Uh, mm -hmm. It's mirrored after, I'm not, I don't mirror it after Ali in the sense of doing it like he does, but the way he works it, I work it in my own way the same way he did. Okay. You ever seen like the clips of him like against the ropes and just like dodging and everything? Like, all that man. comes from, if you ever seen me on the ropes, like in my, in my fights and highlights and anything, that's all that's, um, like it, 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 it's a personable thing with, with boxing, you right. know what I'm saying? I and mean, it's a really intimate sport. So by my coach being with Ali for a period of time, that's how we learn a lot of stuff on the rope. That's why I'm, I'm real good on the ropes. All of that's a syndicate of just, you know, product of just, you know, being taught by a guy that was taught by Ali's camp. Okay, okay. All right, now I really want to get into this interview. Beside you, you have a stack of photos and this is going to kind of like guide us through the interview. So you can start off by flipping the first picture over and tell us, just telling us where you were, what was going on at, at that time. Huh. In the projects. Is this Me back in country. Lafayette? Yeah. yeah. Tell, tell us about that time. Uh, could, fun could times. You, and could you show us the picture? <laughs> Me and some of my closest cousins. Um, we all like first cousins. That's Fred. Let me see. That's Fred. That's me right there with no damn clothes on. That's my cousin King, and that's the tiger. And we all in group chats, like like right now, for real, for real. Okay. Well, and is one of them the one who taught you the karate? Nah, nah, oh, nah. Right. Uh, he actually used to box too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's probably one of my closest cousins. That's my closest female cousin. Okay. So you know, like we literally all of us in group chats together. <laughs> like seeing this picture, but yeah, like we've, uh, you know, it's, it takes a village. So we all, my grandmother and all her sisters and brothers pretty much lived in the same project. Right. So it was all of us, like we can go to everybody crib, you know what I'm right. saying? So then when we all was born, our parents lived in the projects too. So it was like the grandmothers living in the PJs, mm -hmm. the daughters, the, the, the sons and the grandkids. I, I know so, how you know it is, yeah, yeah. It was a village, so yeah, that's how we was all able to come together. And, she knew what was, was every night. Seven on the floor, yo. Pretty much every night, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's how it was. You can go to the next pick. Hi, the Moten. That's why I learned how to box. Talk about um, this a little bit. What, is, what does this mean to you? And so, I actually, uh, I just passed by the Moten Saturday. Mm -hmm. Dropped them a flyer. 
Uh, all my trophies are still in there. Um, special place. This is a place where you, okay, you say you trained here. So yeah. have you, did you box here as well? Like had mm-hmm. matches? Bilal Abdullah Muhammad was the first coach. Um, this was his, his spot. Uh, first come in, we didn't have nothing. Like no ring, uh, no bags, no nothing. Uh, it was an old, old, old movie theater. So I walk in and I'm like, like how the fuck I'm on boxing here? And then he was like, uh, I'm like, where the ring at? He was like, the ring is in your mind. He was like, I got a ring right here. It's a ring over there. So I was like, oh shit. And uh, I went there, 18, never, never left. What Man, does that, why does that saying stick with you and what, in your own words, what exactly does that mean to you? Uh, you could do this anywhere. I mean, I was a national champ, no ring, no nothing. Like, do it. How do you do it? You don't need nothing like to box, gloves, coach. We didn't have nothing. How, did, how does that play into your mentality with you not needing a ring? With you seeing that you didn't need a ring when you're attacking any of your other goals or anything else that you want to do, is that, does that like limit you to have excuses and you just like just full, full, full forces mm. go after what you want? More so, you know what it does? It, uh, it gives me a reason to not have excuses. And when I see people with excuses, evaluate it differently. You know what I'm saying? Tell people all the time I did it with nothing. So if I can, if you got all of this, you can't lose, you shouldn't lose. You should be focused, you should be training, you should be grateful. Okay, proceed to the next. <laughs> my first coach, uh, major part of why I do this, uh, take your time, man. Yeah. This is why we do this. Yeah. I figured y'all had this, guy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, first coach, you know what I'm saying, Coach Duba. He believed in me. Uh, he built me up to, to believe in myself. Uh, he would tell everybody he had a champion, you know. Um, tell me stories. Uh, just time well spent, you know what I'm saying. Uh, beyond boxing. Uh, mentor. Um, well missed. Two questions real quick. How old were you there? Because you were big as shit. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then, two, you say he got you to believe in yourself. What was the problem before you met him that caused uh, you not to? So, in this picture, 18, maybe 19, um, really just getting into boxing. Uh, nah, his confidence. Uh, like, would you say he saw it in you before you saw it in you? Yeah. All my fights we played, like the champ is here. He used to even come out with all my belts. Like, shit used to be crazy. You know what I'm saying? But um, he just believed him. Right. Tell everybody, you know, he had a champion. You know, uh, everybody downtown know about me. That's why you still go to the moat and all my shit is thrown on the inside. Like, you know, his pictures there, my pictures are there, all my trophies. So in the moat like, is a Jerry Ford shrine down there? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, we gotta go check so it out. So I drop all the posters off, you know what I'm saying? They, they pulled them up and all of that good stuff, you know what I'm saying, still. That's why I said I drop one off Saturday. Like, okay. Yeah, but yeah, Coach Julu was definitely, you know. And he was a staple in the community. Uh, he did the most community service I was like in Newport News. You know what I'm saying? No way. Yeah. Yeah, uh, any kids downtown went to him. So if you did something downtown, you basically went to the Moton. That's why everyone knew him. You went mm-hmm. to the Moton, uh, and like he made you pretty much shine something in a box. Yeah, like when Mike, like when Vic hurt his ankle type shit, like he like Vic flew him down with his brother. I mean, with his son Kenyatta, like he helped Vic heal up on his ankle. Like he was like all of them know. Him. Like that's why Vic's sport favorite sport is boxing. Bro. 
Yeah. They all grew up in the moat like under him. Did you you ever box with Vic? Nah, nah, nah. Okay. He he definitely used to come down to the gym and show love and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the moat is, is definitely, you know, Coach Jewel was definitely a okay. big part. Sorry, uh, that's my guy. So this is uh this is my boy Machine's gym. Well, my boy Rajilo. That's me, of course. And that's my boy Giuseppe. Giuseppe actually just he just won it at MSG. Actually, he just uh, he just beat somebody on uh, I can't remember what undercard. Congrats! But, yeah, he just got a big win against Adam Konaki. But uh, those two coaches, man, um, they pretty much showed us how to. They, they, they set the tone for us. Um, we would go down there. This is in Virginia Beach, um, right off the ocean front. Um, we used to go down there and spar all the time. Uh, the guy machine. Uh, he pretty much always wanted to see the same thing that Coach Jewel wanted. He wanted greatness out of all of us, all his fighters, all that good stuff. So uh, we rarely went down to gyms to work. This one of the gyms where we would go down two or three days a week, you know what I'm saying? And uh, just train with Machine, train with Giuseppe, train with the team, and uh, just, just try to, you know, win tournaments. So I think this was right before I was going to the regionals. I think Joe Giuseppe might have been going too. But uh, this is like regional Golden Gloves. This might have been 2009, 2008, something like that. You know what right. I'm saying? Could, could you could you talk about how uh, significant the Golden Gloves is to up and coming boxers? Uh, it's it's the grand prize. You know what it's I'm saying? The grand prize. Um, Golden Gloves is probably the most historical and the most flashy. As far as amateur tournaments won, um, the USA's is actually the most important. That's how you, you know, qualify for the Olympics. But uh, the Golden Gloves, that that's more of a, uh, it's more of a pro-written thing. You know, um, it, it's a glamour deal. I won it, never lost it. You know what I'm saying? Um, state Let's region, go! Champs, you know what I'm saying? So, and I was on one of the best national teams at, at my time. Uh, DC had one of the best national teams, which was the team I was on. Okay. So you know, we were always first and second for the team trophies. I think us in like Florida. So. Yeah, and these times uh, we would just go get work, just just so that we could, uh, you know, make do what it do. We didn't have a ring or none of that stuff. So, like I said, machine would come down, we spar, we get right. all of that work in his gym, and come back to ours. So, before you had equipment in the Moton, or before you even started using equipment, did it feel weird not even practicing with equipment? It's all in the mind. Uh, it's what you do. My first time stepping in a real ring, like an official ring, was like my first fight. That joint was a knockout, I think. What was maybe. that experience like? What was your first fight like? Um, excitement. Um, so, growing up in Louisiana, it's like 300. Like, everybody fight, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> if you can't fight in Louisiana, I don't know what to tell you, son. Like, you, y'all back, like for real. So, in Louisiana, just growing up, I had a lot of fights. So even growing up, going to Woodside, like, Woodside's, <laughs> Nothing bragging wise. Like even some of their rules for Newport New schools have changed because I because of the fight that I had. You know what I'm saying? So it's always been like that caliber. So like just from there, migrating up, you know what I'm saying? From being little to here, it was just all it was all it was all in one thing. So getting into the ring was kinda like another fist fight, but controlled, you know what I'm saying? I I let this be clear, I don't condone school violence and Never, shit like that. Well, I, I, still, just, I talk to the I schools. Just, I, I just, talk to the schools about this, you know what I'm what saying? It, what, what's your record though in school? Like back in, you know what I'm saying? Like I've never lost in school. Uh, not, y'all not y'all hear that? Don't fuck with them. Yeah, <laughs> in, yeah in, 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 in. I mean I never picked fights, never, never in my life. You know it was saying? always like it was brought to you. Well I don't like bullies, for real for I don't like people I don't like seeing people bully. Uh, so like I mean if I fought it was either because somebody was trying to fight me. Or because like you did something to somebody else, and I was just like, that's whack. Okay. But yeah, me personally, nah. You never like wanted to try to start fights. You weren't the bully. No, nah, no. Nah. All my fights, uh, even outside of school, mm-hmm. happened in front of my house a lot of the times. Okay. Because you had to come to the crib to fight. Like my mom, yeah, she'd be like, Tell Wait, was, she, was she like, if one of y'all fights, because y'all lived in the same, you know, saying the same project, was my she mom. like, if one fight, all y'all fight, or was it like one on one type shit? Yeah, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom was uh, like out there in Louisiana. If you go to, if you look at my post, if my family members post a lot of times, they'll be like, "You get it from your mom." Mm-hmm. My mom was like, "Your like, mom was like that." Yeah, mom was like that. Yeah, As a matter of fact, me and my son was behind her the other day. I had a rental car. I beeped at her. I could see the hair flying and shit. I'm like, so my son was like, "Yo, yo, beep at mama, see what she do." 
because we already know. Yeah, so like she realized it was us, so I pulled up to the house, she like, yo, boy, I'm like, yo, you too old. And you too, you, you're almost 60, she's still coming. <laughs> too old. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, I definitely, uh, most people would probably say I get it from my mom. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? She's, uh, um, yeah, she's still, everyone's still scared of her. You know what I'm Even you? I, I tell you what. Be honest. Honest to God, yo. I tell people that my mom is like older, and I'm like, yo, she can't beat me. Truthfully, my, my son's 16. To this day, like, he'll look at me with a straight face and be like, you can't beat your mama. Man. He'll yeah, tell you, your son's like, <laughs> No bullshit. Like, he'll, he'll, like, he's dead serious. Like, a lot of my family, like, the cousins from that picture, yeah. my cousin, like, my cousin King, I'd be like, man, my mama can't, I, I swear to God, they, they'd be like, bro, I believe Lucy put you to sleep. I'd be like, son, ain't no way, bro. Like, I'm yeah. like, they'd be like, nah, son. They be like, nah, that's Lucy. I be like, I don't care. Don't fuck with Lucy. I yeah. love, I love Lucy. If anything, I love Lucy. Yeah, she was yeah. named after her great grandmother because her grandmother was like super mean. Ah. So my mom is named Alvora, but they call her Lucy because she she was like Mama Lucy. So. so she get it from her mom. Well, her grandmother. Her grand. Okay, yeah. so it's just a long line of. I got it. I got it. Okay, okay. Mama Lucy. Yeah, that's where it started. Okay, go ahead. Ha. <laughs> Uh, this one of my first news articles. Um, just had a kid, um, my third kid, 23 years old, three kids. Um, started boxing, well, I mean, you know, started boxing when I first had my first son. By this time, I'm getting into the shipyard because uh, I, I wound up not going to Cali. I was an Olympic hopeful. Because we had kids again, I wound up not going to Olympic trials. Um, so I wound up getting a job at the shipyard saying I make it work from here, pretty much. Uh, so my plan was to, to pretty much um, work and box. You know what I'm saying? Work in the daytime at the shipyard, box at nighttime. And that's what me and my wife did for like years, you know what I'm saying? So uh, she watched the kids, my parents helped with the kids, her parents helped with the kids. And then uh, from there, you know what I'm saying? We, uh, we made it work. That's, that's how I was able to get here. You know, uh, just from all of this, you know, just you know, consecutive money, and uh, my family, my, my family just helping look out for me, you know? This how, was a good time. How helpful is it to have a counterpart on your team to match that energy, to see the vision that you see without it even, you know what I'm saying, being there for, for your wife to have your back like that? Uh, means a lot. Well, so it's a village, it's a village mindset. It's not even just my wife, it's, it's everyone. It's her parents, you know what I'm saying? Right. My parents right. and her. You know, uh, we don't have no help outside of that outside of that circle. So, well, we do, but you know, we don't rely on anyone outside Correct. of that circle. You know, um, but we got we, we have good in laws. I have good in laws. I have good parents. You know, uh, they love my kids. You know, so they they look out. They take care of them. So, like I'm here right now. I had to call my dad. Like, hey, can you get Jalen from work? He was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, it, you know, uh, when when it comes to boxing, I feel like everyone kind of kind of dives in a little bit more and, and help out. Okay. So. Uh, uh, this is when I was winning pretty much all the regionals, all the national type deals. Um, this is growing up like teenage years or? Yeah, I might be 21 at the oldest. At the, nah, actually, I'm 1920, 1920. Um, like this belt right here, they flew us out to Cali. There's a showdown. Um, man, we get to Cali, we staying on LAX. They got us in the Hilton. Uh, <laughs> yo, it's crazy. Like, they giving us a couple thousand dollars. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm an amateur, yo. Like, uh, man, we go to the fight, bro. You got, like, Sugar Ray Leonard there. It's just crazy. And it's, it's basically the top eight heavyweights from uh, the East Coast mm -hmm. versus the top eight heavyweights from the West Coast. Uh, so I took that belt home, you know. And then uh, this belt was uh, against one of my homeboys. That was like a, a Juneteenth fight, you know, a Fourth of July fight where uh, he was the best, and he's actually one of them top MMA guys, Brian Collette, and uh, we wound up fighting and I, I beat him for that belt. So uh, we used to just take pictures. This was that uh, Southeast Day Parade, Southeast Day Parade, uh, okay. downtown Newport News, back in hey. the day. This might've been old, like I said, 08, 09. I've probably seen you out there. I yeah. go to my family. Yeah, we used to, we used to go, like, year. we were one of the, so you know, it used to end in front of the Moton. So when it ended in front of the Moton, we would all come as boxers, me, Jeremiah Wiggins, uh, uh, all of us would come and we would just have all our stuff. So, okay. yeah, this was, well, actually I got my jacket on, so a lot. It can't be. What was the most memorable amateur fight that you had? The Ooh. most memorable, toughest, and the biggest? 
Mm. The most memorable and, and, and possibly one of the toughest, uh, I fought Joy DeWaco uh, at regionals. Um, this guy was, uh, he had just won the under 19 Worlds, which is basically the Olympics for, for that year. Mm -hmm. So this was 08 probably. Uh, he had just won the under 19 Worlds. I'm chilling. I got 19 fights. He got two, like 295, some cra like crazy number like that. Uh, and we, we set the fight. I don't know who he is because I'm still new to boxing. 19 fights, I don't know much. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I meet him. You know what I'm saying? He like, yo, you know who you fighting? I'm like, Shh, I don't know, bro. Like, Joey DeWaco, some, 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 some dude. He like, yeah, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I think I know you. He like, nah, you probably just seen me on YouTube or some shit. It's still not registering. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We have a whole conversation the whole time. This is who I'm fighting. Yeah. I'm not going to bother. So uh, I'm, about to, I'm about to go into the ring. And Machine, as a matter of fact, so the white guy from, the, from that, bit, from, right. from that uh, last photo, uh, Machine's like, yo, this is what you trained for, this is what you've been waiting for. And I'm like, yo, like, like, I know who I am. So it's like, bro, like, you know what I do. Like, like I got this. He like, nah, he like, you're going against Joey DeWaco. I'm just like, Joey DeWaco. I'm like, he like, I'm explaining to you later. So I'm like, all right, cool. We fight. I drop him in the third round. Uh, because he was the 19 world champion, they give him the fight, right? The next day, his dad comes. His dad and his mom and dad come up to me. They're like, yo, like you beat our son last night. His dad is his coach. He like, yo, he like, I got Lou Duva on the phone. He like, yo, uh, he like, if you want to sign with Lou Duva, he like, uh, he like, what you do for a living? He like, you just box train. I'm like, nah, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> at that time, like, I work at the, I work at the ship. I, mean, I worked at Verizon. I was a former flight like Verizon. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, I got a full time job. I'm like, I came here because I actually stopped. I was, I was late, I was late going to the USA's. I, 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 they still let me weigh in. I beat the guy, knocked all the teeth out of his mouth. I won the championship. He couldn't go because he was the one that was registered. So they called me, and that's how I filled in for him. What? So, uh, yeah, so just beating Joey, his dad's like, there's no way you, like, you don't train full time. I'm like, nah. So uh, I passed that opportunity up. Me and Coach Dula was like, we didn't want to do it. But um, I, I beat him, you know what I'm saying? And uh, everybody, that's pretty much how I got on. Like, after that fight, you beat the number one person in the world as an amateur. So everybody would be like, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? We heard what happened with you and Joey. What did that do to your ego, man? Like at that age, like that age and being so new. Not knowing I didn't care, for real, for real. Really? Nah, like, I mean, it's still kind of that way now. Like it. That if it just felt like you had still had more to do? Or, yeah, because it's like you know who you are, so it's kind of like, oh, okay. like y'all just finding out. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So it, it was like, like it, it's a natural thing for me. So <clears throat> him being number one in the world and all, I, I, like it didn't, you know what I'm saying? That's why, I mean, even if they would have told me it before the fight, it probably wouldn't have made a difference. Mm -hmm. But that's why I said I went and I smoked him. Like, I mean, clearly. Like, I, I wouldn't lie to you. You seen the fight, I clearly, I beat him, for sure. They just gave him the fight. But, um, yeah, it, that's, that's how I approach all my fights, pretty much, anyway. Okay. So. I do have another question real quick. Would you ever, do you ever think about uh, branching out into MMA? They don't make enough money, for okay. real. Uh, for what they do, they don't make enough money. Like. It's just crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I just, I, I'm just not getting hit with an elbow or something to make less than what I make now. It's just it, the man. Like, bare, like bare hand types almost and Yeah, my boy Reggie and... Bournette's the bare knuckle champion. He can have that too. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, he's a bare knuckle world champion. If, if y'all ever want to interview him, yo, yo, he just won a bare knuckle joint uh, at the Norfolk Scope. He's the one that fought at Norfolk Scope uh, a couple months ago. What? Yeah, but he's the Bantam, like he's the Bantam world champ for bare knuckle. Yeah, y'all want to let me know, so I definitely can set that up. And he's in Norfolk. We, we might got to see about that. Yeah, he's in Norfolk or Virginia Beach, something like that. So, I mean, he, he okay. on our side, yeah. Might check him out, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can go ahead to the next one. Ha. Uh, so, this that, is that. That's a big jump from the first picture to yeah. this picture. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. a few more belts. Yeah. Is this a, a around, like, the same time frame? Yeah, so, uh, so th like, those are some of my first belts that I collected. Okay. This was all, like, I had, man, there's an amateur, um, probably 10, 11, 12 belts. Like, it was crazy. Do you still uh, have This these? is just some of them. Man, I don't. Uh, wind up not really giving them out, just, like, giving them gems, saying I'm going to come back and get them, stuff mm. like that. Uh, I, the reason why I had these like this, I used to carry them in my trunk. You know what I'm saying? I was never like a guy to like really like be on some shit like I got the belts. Yeah. So I mean all of these are like state and regional and all of that, but nah, I just uh I would have it in my trunk for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Uh 
And if you wanted to see them shits, you could see them. You know what I'm saying? Like, my boy, I got the museum on me. Yeah, yeah like, I mean, uh, I mean, just being young, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Pretty much what happened was this. Like, you want to fight? So, I, like, even right now, I'm going to my car. I got all my boxing stuff in my car. Mm-hmm. So, okay. back then, it was like, I want a belt. No, I'm telling you, just go in the trunk. Like, so when I said it was in the trunk, it was in the trunk with all my boxing shit. Mm-hmm. Like, my bags and all that shit. It was yeah. just a piece of, like. <laughs> yeah, like, it was just like, ah. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, winning Some belts. Change. Yeah, winning belts don't really mean nothing. Uh, it's the people, yo, for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, so for all of these joints, you go to an amateur fight now, last fight of the night is empty. For my joints, if it started at 4 o'clock, I didn't fight to 12. When I'm telling you it would be packed still, They listen waiting for to you. Me. Yo, I'm telling you, like, <laughs> it used to be crazy, man. It used to be crazy when I was amateur. But, yeah, that's, that's, that's why we had all these belts. All these joints are from tournaments and regional champs, something. So. All over the country or in one Yeah, spot? all over the country and regionals. Uh, basically, like Golden Gloves and all of that, these are all of the belts from those. Oh, sure, okay. Uh, yeah. Going towards nationals, all of that stuff. Do you get like the necklace with the boxing gloves and all that stuff? Yeah, too? you go to actual national Golden Gloves, they give you like a little glove. It's, it's, not, it's not what you think it is. Okay. But they give us a belt and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So. You'll proceed whenever you're ready. Uh, me and my dad, Coach Lamb. Uh, this is my first pro fight. I want to know, my how, second did you, pro fight. how did you. How did Jerry Forrest get to this point? Um, so, Coach Dula was uh, coaching me, of course. So this was like 2010. Um, it was hard to get fights and stuff in the state as far as the amateur. Uh, and I kind of felt like I did like what I really set out to do in a sense. So in 2000, I didn't have my first pro fight until 2012. 2010 is when I first turned pro, like in the sense of, I'm just gonna get some money. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Having all these kids, I'm gonna get some money. Yeah. <laughs> um, two years later is when we actually had this fight. Coach Dula just died. Mm-hmm. Um, this is Kadaro Simpkins' father, uh, Lamb Simpkins. Uh, and, and he started coaching me for a while. Uh, I, went, I started going basically to Norfolk after Coach Dula died to box and go. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would pretty much be there every day. And that's why I had my first maybe 10, 12, 15 fights maybe or something like that, you know what I'm saying? In this gym, still talk to him, you know what I'm saying? I actually went to the national, well, to the national competition the other day just to see him, you know what I'm saying? So, still my guy, you know what I'm saying? He's coaching a lot of amateur kids, so we still all talk, you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, this is, this is, my, uh, this is my second amateur fight, Redskins joint. Um, going against Bryce Rutani Koa, he 4-0. I'm 1-0, he got four knockouts. And uh, this is the Redskins charity event. Cigar joint. All the rich celebrities, man, up in there. Um, Washington Redskins, cheerleaders, is, they're, they're the uh, cigar girls. And uh, we fighting. I think they raised like $5.2 million or something that night. Like, it was, a, it was a crazy night. <laughs> like, it was, yeah, this, this was a crazy night. But that's why they got all this shit on like, so these things they had on sale, like somebody buying those, like. Oh, okay, so like, this wasn't like so you like, like, at the dealership. This is like nah, at the nah, charity like, event. Like this Maserati yeah. is gone. Like somebody grabbed that. Like, for real. And they be selling all those for charity and stuff. Bro, like they had like four or five cars for charity. What? And like guys just giving, the, man. Each table, I think, was like 10K. Just to sit at the table, you know what I'm saying? Well, each whole table was like 10K. It was like 1,000 a seat. Yes. Yeah. And there was only four fights. They weren't, here, they weren't there for the fights. It was just there for charity event. Spend some money, give some money to a good cause. How, how big are you into charity? Uh, me, man, anything that I can do for the community in general. Uh, any charitable events. I'm actually, uh, there's a guy to go to VCU. Uh, football, I'm sorry, VSU, he's a football player. Uh, they, just, they just got uh, a grant for like some new gear. Right. So I just donated to them. And I'm gonna try to bring some of those guys into the, into the gym sometime and let them start working out, try to get them conditioned in the summertime. Okay. So anything that I can do to help in, tap in, I'm there for it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, good quote. Um, you're kind of told what you can and can't be, statistic-wise, I guess you could say. Um, so statistically, having kids so young, uh, being from the projects, all of this kind of stuff, you probably shouldn't be at a level of where I was, you know what I'm saying? Um, so a lot of the time, I just like to put it out there that, you know, shit can be done, you know? Uh, there's no such thing as excuses, you know what I'm saying? Every cycle can be broken, every, everything can be broken, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Mama Lucy, the woman that I'm talking about, my great-grandmother, so she was like one generation removed from slavery. 
So like her mom was a slave. So okay, so Mama Lucy missed slavery by a couple of years. So she never had a high school education, no kind of degree. So my grandmother only made it to fourth grade. You get what I'm saying? My mom went to college. That's a big ass leap, though. It's a big leap. That's a you know big what I'm ass leap, fam. So it's like it's all there. Like my family was the first black sheriff in Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? What? So like yeah, so like my my education and like my my teaching was different as a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like one taught about slavery, so it's all of that's in here, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you still got all these demons that everybody deal with, you know right. what I'm saying? So uh, these are really just statements, man, of people, uh, letting people know who I am, you know what I'm saying? Uh, how I did it, you know what I'm saying? What you can and can't do. Uh, you choose to be a statistic, you know what I'm saying? Everybody have a choice. Uh, I chose to, to, I always say I work my life in reverse. Uh, I was having kids and trying to stabilize my family, get a job and box where my homeboys didn't have no kids. They was like, I'm talking about fighting for PBC back then, Golden Boy. I'm like, yo, on my national team, I'm like, damn. You know what I'm saying? And now, like, I'm still here. A lot of them guys fizzled out at 26, 27, 28, and that's when I started really peaking mm -hmm. and making my money. So like, you know, I'm still, I'm still here, and I'm still a top echelon fighter. So it's a blessing that, you know, all started from the beliefs. You know what I'm saying? How my kids, uh, inspirations. These are the three that you had at a young age. Yeah, yeah. Jalen, Javon, Julia. Um, good kids. Uh, like I said, had three kids by 23. Um, back to back, you know. Uh, like he's in 10th, he's in 7th, she in 6th. Like, that's well, now it's, you know what I'm saying, 8th, 7th, and 10th now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had a lot of kids pr pretty young, pretty fast. Uh, just holding it down. You know, this was uh, the shipyard years. Mm -hmm. Living in Lee's Mill, uh, going to work. This might have been like Easter or something. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we just always made it work with the kids. You know, uh, like I said, instead of being Olympic hopeful, we had kids. So, uh, they're a blessing, man. Um, kept us in the house, spent a lot of money. But, you know, uh, they keep us grounded, you know, keep us, keep us close-knit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they all got qualities of me and their mom, you know? So, um, you know, it, it's a good family, man. I love, I love these kids. These are... They boxing yet? Nah. Nah. What, uh, what, what are they into? He's a baseball player. He plays for, like, one of the top baseball teams in okay. the state. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, this guy, not sure. He just be outside. Honestly, so he's outside like me. Like in the sense of like me just running, playing all day. Right. Uh, he he's in that sense. Uh, she, I don't know, fashion design. I don't know, bully, fashion designer. Just somebody every day, like. <laughs> man, she like yo, she, listen, he's a good one. No suspensions. Listen, she man. Complete opposite. Yo, sixth grade, yo, everything already done. Suspensions, yo, she. She got the, she got daddy hands. Yo, she mean, she mean, she mean, she mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, now the kids are cool. Uh, they all got good qualities of us though, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, uh, all of them straight A students, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, just smart kids. Mm -hmm. You know, but they're good kids, they're good kids. They support you in what you, in what you like to do as well though? They don't really like, uh, <laughs> I guess cause I got the hat back with the chains and shit, you know, they friends be like, you know what I'm saying? Yo, like, what's up Mr. Farber? They just be like, yo. Like we was at a baseball game, <laughs> we, we leaving out. So like the whole football team like, yo, hey, Mr. Forrest. My son look at me like, yo, you better not wave to them. Yeah. <laughs> you better not wave to them, yo. I'm like, what's up, fellas? He like, and you gonna wave to them, yo. He like, yo, why would you wave to the football team, yo? He like, now nah, I gotta hear about that all day tomorrow, bro. I'm like, yo, you know what I'm saying? So stuff like that kind of annoying, but I, I think they like it, you know what I'm saying? All around, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they like it. Cause I'm at all the games, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you the cool dad, all of yeah. This. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I think they like it in, in a sense though. People can't say they don't want to grow and be the cool dad. You want to be the cool dad. I just be chilling. You yeah, know what I'm saying? that's dope. So. Uh, me and my wife, yeah. She the rock, you know what I'm saying? Uh, she's the reason why, probably could, pro she's probably the, the biggest reason why I'm able to be where I'm at. Uh, keeps me focused. Um, Keeps me level-headed. Uh, we've been together since high school. Um, 
She was the captain of the cheerleading team. I played football, basketball. Look at uh, that. Huh? I said, look at that old cheesy yeah, couple. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like the high school sweetheart story. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, wind up, ah, shit's crazy. She, like, she got pregnant on prom night. It's, it's like, it's, yeah. Come on, man, come on. I blame my parents for that. They got the room. But, they, um, your parents got the room, bro? Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, I promise, yo. <laughs> I, yeah. Your I, parents got the room? Fact, that's from prom night right there, matter of fact. That's from prom night right here. Yo, we had like the stretch, the stretch navigator. Like, matter of fact, does your son, does your son know this? Yeah, yo. Yo, he already it's knows. Crazy. Not. <laughs> it's crazy. I play with my kids about it all the time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you wish you got a girl like as fine as your mom. But I'd be like, yeah, like you made on like prom, you know what I'm saying? Come on. So yeah, like when he go out, I mess with him about it. Cause uh, you know, like I said, there was that was like the next morning. Mm-hmm. And that was prom night. But we was just chilling. Uh we just had a fun night, man. Um, me and all my homeboys and our girls. Uh, and then we all had like, well, you know, my, like I said, my parents always looked out for me. So it was like prom ended. We go to the motherfucking uh, TGI Fridays. My parents, they're waiting on us so you can't get in. If, after 12, you're under 18. Mm-hmm. My parents let me and all the homeboys in. People knocking on the window like, yo, let us in. So my parents wind up letting everybody in. Uh, and we just had a good time, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, all of this shit is, you know, just small memories of me and her just always sharing stuff. Like, we was getting lit that night. Like, <laughs> just, uh, just having fun. But yeah, that's just us enjoying ourselves at weddings, different things like that, man. Mm-hmm. Different parts of our life, so. I love it. I stole this from my wife most likely too. I don't know this. <laughs> Nine times out of ten. Uh, wedding night. Was that anything like prom night? Uh, for real, for real, you know what's crazy? We got married so close, of course, to graduating. So all our oh, friends really? were okay. in our wedding. You know oh. what I'm saying? We had a real big wedding. So uh, it was kind of like a, um, best way I can explain it for real, it's almost, it's almost like a high school reunion. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But like, it's like right after school. Yeah. So I graduated those six, we get married in 08. You know what I'm saying? So mm. it's like, when I say all our homeboys and homegirls were there, it's like everybody that we knew from school. It was, they, like, a re- it was like another back. prom. If they was in the military, they was just getting in, you know yeah. what I'm saying? They flopped. So uh, yeah, it was like a, uh, our night was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Again, uh, like we was under 18. I mean, under 21, we were all drinking. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they know to keep the bar, because we're getting married. So, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, everybody under 21, but we was just having a good time. You know what I'm saying? Me, my family, my friends, yeah. This, this was definitely a fun time in life. Good time in life. Young. Uh, this is from probably 2019, 2020, uh, COVID area. Uh, this is on like Christmas day. You know what I'm saying? Just going to the in-laws house for a sec, mm-hmm. just so the kids can open up the gifts. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was COVID, so like our family went, then my brother, then my brother family went, and his, you know what I'm saying? So uh, this was like when it was our turn. So uh, my mother-in-law, she takes a family photo every, every year. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So this just happened to be the family photo of the year. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, just, just a little holiday. You know what I'm saying? Holiday shopping day, holiday chill, and just going to the in-laws house for a little, little how trip. Big, how big were you affected by COVID? Um, I feel like everybody in the house caught it but me. Yeah, mm. like, uh, are, so are you that vaccinated? time, huh? You vaccinated? You, are you vaccinated? I wasn't at the time. So, like, well, what I do, like, man, like, so in my house, I might eat a chip off the floor. <laughs> like, if I, I'm saying, like, if I just clean the floors, I'm not just random. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, like, I feel like doing small stuff like that is, like, with me and Chip, me and my homeboy Chip from downtown, we had a little thing where we was like, yo, nobody downtown catching COVID. Because everybody downtown just do real shit. Mm-hmm. Everybody uptown is like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I don't want these germs. Yeah. So it's like, your immune system different, you know what I'm saying? But I just feel like if you just had a real one's immune system, like, you was fine. No, and I was drinking real. pineapple juice, you know what I'm saying? Every day, pineapple juice, cayenne. Like, I yeah, know yeah. what to do, so. No, nah, I'm from downtown, bro. Yeah. Did, you, did you catch COVID? You catch going? <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying, yo. Yeah, what I'm saying. You I don't think I caught that shit either. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? That joke was from weak immune system. So like, so in my house, if you caught COVID, I'd just be like, you weak, yo. Yeah. <laughs> you catch COVID, yo. I know where you from. Man, you, yeah. <laughs> you ain't the real one, yo. They, like, my kids are get mad at me. And when I'm like, yo, everybody caught it but me, yo. You know what I'm saying? So even my mama caught it. Told yeah. her she getting old. Like, man, look, I'm the only one. I was the only one, but yeah. Yeah, okay. Doing what I'm supposed to do, you know what I'm saying? 
So, this is family from Iraq. Uh, I try to post and show love to everybody from the area because everybody don't make it, you know what I'm saying? Um, I want to say this kid got killed. Either he got mm. killed or on his way to, to the NFL, they killed him. You know what I'm saying? What? Yeah. So uh, where That's I'm from, um, it's, like I said, it's different, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm, my mom and them are from a town called Abbeville, but New Orleans and Baton Rouge is where we, like where our family's at. Mm -hmm. So Erath is like right outside of say Lafayette, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of these guys are talented, man. Track, NFL, NBA, and uh, it's not even being caught up. It's just living in the area. So we don't have bloods and crips. We just got sections like, Wards like and stuff. so like yeah, the neighborhood that I was from, like P Ward. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. they just Project Ward. Okay. So it's like they wore red. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, another neighborhood might wear blue. Ain't you know what I'm saying? So it's like just being intertwined in different cities is is, is just different. Is, out there. is it because of the war, how the war is set up and because it's not like gangs where it's like this side is yeah, this side. Like, so, is it easy is it easy to get caught in the crosshairs so, and shit? So that's the thing. I feel that, I feel it's way easier because like so in a gang, you might be crip, your cousin might be blood, your Correct. brother might be blood. Correct. So y'all might y'all still family. Correct. Where like out here in Louisiana it's like we cousins. I don't like you and you don't like me and we first cousins. So when my homeboys see you or your homeboys, we all They're fight. Going off. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it makes it it makes it for a more uncontrolled environment because it's not like you're looking for colors, you just see somebody you don't like, you know what I'm saying? So how it's on site with gangs, that's how it is in Louisiana. Like that's why you could you could type in Louisiana fights, it, it shows hundreds of millions because of how it how easy it is. One of my cousins just got brain damaged like two or three years ago, fist fight out there, two girls, <laughs> beat another girl. Like yeah, one of my cousins just went to prison, like I think. Tempted murder, I, you know what I'm saying? So would you say that you, what made you move here? Like, how did you make so, it out of that? So my mom was like, she wanted somebody in uniform. My dad joined the Navy. My mom and dad moved here when I was like three or four. Uh, I didn't like Virginia. So my mom let me stay in Louisiana with my grandparents. So by our cousins being law enforcement and stuff, you know what I'm saying, it's kind of like, you know, back in the day you had like superheroes, but like it was different for me because like, so we was from a small place, but like, you know, I-10 is right there. So like all the dope and drugs were being ran like through them areas. So it's like New Jack City, mm -hmm. how you see cats with chains. Mm -hmm. Like my cousins coming to the house with these chains on. Like I'm riding, yo, I'm on the back of motorcycles when I'm little, I'm, yo, I'm riding in cars, bro. Hydraulics. I'm talking about like Cali California cars in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The candy paint, the dubs. So it's like... Uh, what, what's the dude name? Um, currency. Like, our currency calls me. Bro, like, it's just, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, seeing it as a, as a kid, you don't realize that drug dealers are your heroes. Right. Until you hear <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, so, so it was like a culture shock. You know what I'm saying? Being in Louisiana is like, your whole family, you know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't look at nobody in a certain way because that's all you know. When they come to your house, it's like, they're kissing you. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But then you go outside and they're like, yo, I mean, I got, like, my mom, I can't say it, but like, uh, like, just family, you know what I'm saying? Like, people I call uncle now were like notorious drug dealers, you know what I'm saying? 10, 15, 20 years, and now they out, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, just just not knowing when you're younger that people are the bad guys, you know what does, I'm saying? Does that, does that help you not judge people, just like on, oh, a, on a daily basis, yeah. like Everybody, not judge yeah. a book box cover and yeah. shit like that? It's not my job to judge, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you believe in, that's his job, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't play God, you know what I'm saying? I don't play Yahweh, just, I don't play him, I don't play the most high. So, you know what I'm saying, whatever you got going with whoever you believe in, that's on you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm just here to do my work, be a servant, you know what I'm saying? So, going back, when you say it was a culture shock, so coming from Louisiana to here, like you saw that down there, did you, you didn't see that when you came up here? Yeah, nah. Uh, my first time, my first memory of ever seeing a two-story house was like my first townhouse. No bullshit. Like, so if you don't know something, right, it doesn't make sense to you. So like me growing up in the projects, I didn't have to leave the projects. March still was down the street, got off the bus every day with my cousins, we went to March still. Like, we didn't really go nowhere, you know what I'm saying? So like, when, we, when we moved to, to like uh, Louisiana, I mean to, uh, to Virginia, me and my cousin are tied to one of the girl, the girl from the picture. Yeah. I, you know, we talk about it to this day. We remember like it was yesterday, yo. We remember opening the door for the first time in Virginia being like, yo, 
We like, where the fuck we at, yo? Like, did you yo, feel like no it was trash? a mansion, though? Like, yeah. No, it was like, we looking at each other like, yo, <laughs> like, where the hell we at, yo? <laughs> and like, so, so like, we didn't know there was even a two-story, like, townhouse. We yeah. had never seen the, we never seen a townhouse before. So, it was like 12 o'clock at night, we get to, we get to Virginia, and it's like, like, where we going, yo? Like, yo, who live here? Like, my aunt, like, your mom and dad, I'm like, nah. <laughs> like, I know this ain't our crib. Yeah, it sounded like my first time seeing like two story houses, like yeah. for real. Yeah. So, okay, because <clears throat> even even here we got two story projects. Yeah. But how? So why? How well, do y'all so, not? So, so in Louisiana, it's all shotgun houses. Yeah. So yeah, all yeah, the houses yeah. are like a little bit. All the houses like are like a little bit bigger than this. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, if, if you zeal like Abbeville, Louisiana houses, mm -hmm. they don't even have dates on them. They don't have dates on none of the on none of those for sale sites. <laughs> nah. nah. Tin roof still, that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Plated shingles, yeah. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah, Louisiana is like crazy, yeah. You gotta think it's one of the poorest states in the country. Us in Mississippi. Right, right, right. right. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> it's, it's all shotgun houses. Ain't nothing really, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I never- Do you, do you ever go back down? How, how often do you go back down? Oh, all the time, all the time. Me and my cousin's playing the, the ones from the picture. Mm -hmm. We're planning a trip to go down there uh, early next year. You know what I'm saying? My grandparents' funeral uh, grave is down there. So we, we try to make sure we, you know what I'm saying? That's where our home is. You know, so. Did you get a chance to go to school down there? Yeah, yeah. So I went, <laughs> I went there up until like a full year up fifth grade. Mm -hmm. um, after that was like half school years. What happened is like, so being in Louisiana, so like, you know, I used to get whips, you know, beatings or whatever. So got like. In school? No, nah, no. Nah, oh yeah, in school too. Y'all yeah. got paddle and shit like that. Yeah, like, so my mom was like, like I said, she was like that girl. You know what I'm saying? So like. She didn't like kill me, beat me, but like I feel like I got whipped a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like for every little thing. <laughs> but um, I feel like because of that though, it kind of like made me tougher. Mm -hmm. So my mom and it was here, so it'd be like, y'all in fifth grade, I'm signing my own sign paper. Long story short, I got all Fs. Like I'm, get, I'm getting paddles every day in school. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm signing, I'm writing letters to the teachers like, I can't believe my grandson is, you know what I'm saying, messing up like this. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna take care of this at home. Yeah, so my grandma didn't mean nothing about that shit. I'm hiding, I'm hiding report cards, yo, I'm, all that shit. Like, so my mom was like, you got straight Fs. I'm, like, I'm an AB student. She was like, nah, you coming to Virginia. So that's okay. when she made me come here. Okay. But uh, my 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, I could've went back to school to graduate. Great, what, what caused you to get the Fs? Oh, yo, so by me just being me, like, yo, so how can I put this? I was a kid, like, I ain't care, so I don't like school. No, 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 but you was getting A's and B's, like, so what? It's just my, what oh, okay. Well, see, I got A's and B's, so my mom was with me. My dad oh, was with me. They don't play Okay, that okay, okay. My grandma in Louisiana, she was just like, I'm glad you're here. I'm yeah. like, me too. <laughs> so when I'm in school in Louisiana, it's like, yo, like, because of who my family is, everybody can. So it's like, yo, slug, yo. Yeah. So like, while everybody playing, yeah. like, I ain't did my homework, so I'm on the wall, like, foot kicked up, like, yo. Everybody like, what up, Slug? So like, I was like, no, like even in fifth grade, it's like the kid that like didn't even play at recess. Like Slug ain't playing, so you know Slug got in trouble. You know what I'm saying? So I got a paddle every day to the point where they would give me paddle passes, for real. The teachers would be like, like one time, I can remember Ms. Maya. I did you say a paddle pass? Yeah, like I did my homework this one time. <laughs> like, I didn't do my homework so much when I was younger that one time I did the shit. And I'm like, yo, I did it last night. My teacher like, nah, you ain't do your homework. She's like, stop lying to me, yo. I'm like, yo, I promise you, yo, I emptied my whole backpack out. Found the paper that I did. She was like, cause I already got paddled though. Like, cause I forgot. Cause I was like, nah, but I'm sitting down, I'm like, oh shit, like, yo, I did do that shit. Yo, I pulled it out. She was like, you know what, yo, she's like, I'm gonna give you a week paddle pass. Hey, and yo. then from then on, like, all my teachers would just be like, yo, you know what, yo? Like, if you do something for us, yo, I'm gonna give you a paddle pass, yo. Fuck yeah, all and right. Then, I still ain't do the work though, so I still ain't do the work every day. But, yeah, they would give me paddle passes just to try to get me, because I want a bad kid. You just went do Respectable. Work. You just went do work. Just went do no, nah, like in school I do all the work, but when I got home I ain't do none of the homework. Oh, okay. So like, while, while they telling us how to do like test shit, yeah. I'm asleep, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But like, I'm gonna wake up and be like, how you doing, have, have a great day, you know, but, see you tomorrow. And, but you, it wasn't like you didn't know the material, you just didn't. I just didn't do it. Like, yeah, yeah like we're going, <laughs> like we're looking at, you know what I'm saying, instructional shit, I'm going to sleep, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, I might, I might get a D on the test, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Instead of like an A or B, cause I'm just, just from what I heard yeah. a couple of times I was up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, 
So yeah, so that's 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 why you know so I try to post anyone from home that's doing something about it. Okay, all right, all right. and this is why you also into like charities and stuff like whatever you can do for the youth. Be, well, because like everybody that. needs somebody to believe in. That's why I'm. That's why I try to touch uh, the communities. Yeah. Because it's easier for you to see me and be like, oh, yo, he really from the Moton. Correct. Yo, he really be doing this. Yeah, I was, t- you know I was just saying? talking to um, bro about that. It's just like, it's hard, in Vir- especially in Virginia, I'll just say in downtown Newport News. Like, we don't have anybody to, like, look at, aspire to, or anything like that. All the they don't nobody move comes away back. for a sport. They move we don't away, have a yeah. Like, nothing. Like, nobody to look at and be like, yo, I can really do this. I can really obtain this. Versus when you go to, like, a big Atlanta, you know, Chicago, yeah, anywhere like, like that, right. you can actually see it. Florida, anywhere like that, you can see it and you can feel like you can actually obtain it. I'm there. So that's why I try to, you know, make myself valuable. That's great, man. Uh, this is my dad, joined the military, wound up being the E-9 in the Navy. Uh, he was like the Joint Force Command Chief for like, I don't know, Norfolk, Portsmouth. Um, he still there? Nah, he, he retired in December. Okay. He retired in Congratulations, E-9, Pop. 32 years, uh, you know, top of his class. Um, mm. Uh, he's part of the reason why I kind of think and move the way I move. Um, so coming from Louisiana, he just deprogrammed me pretty much. So like in the car, we ain't listen to no rap, no nothing. It was all like motivational speaking. Les Brown, yo, like I, I don't, I, still to this day, when we get in the car, I think me and him, I think he still turn the radio off. Like I don't really, I don't have no recollection of like listening to nothing beyond like smart talk or motivational talk with my dad. You listen to, uh, what's his name, E.T.? E.T., yeah, yeah, every time. Yeah, I, well, no, yeah. like this, like when I was a kid, yeah, none, this is like this when was all they had was Les Brown type right. deal, he would have like all their tapes. Mm. So if we, so going eight, 18 hours to Louisiana, 18 hours. Real shit. Nothing but motivational speaking, mm. just. Uh, my dad's one of them kind of guys where like, uh, that's why he was like an E-9 in the Navy for real. Um, he's one of them guys where like, he make you believe in yourself. Mm. So uh, like, uh, that's, that's why I'm strong minded. Um, he like, he real life, like programmed me because he didn't have no one to talk to. You know, he his, his stepfather showed him everything that he could do. Da, 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 like, got him, got him here. So he always took the time to show me, so that I didn't miss out on nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, well, like I I didn't even know about rap. Uh, back that ass up, by, and I'm from Louisiana, so back that ass up by uh, Drew by the Hot Boys. Oh, by the, yeah. That was the first song that I really heard her like just outside of like just hearing shit. Like that was the first song I actually knew because my dad. Wait, wait, like, okay, when you was down in Louisiana, how how was like music and shit like that? Like, were you? Oh yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I knew about it, okay. but I wasn't a fan because all I knew was like motivational shit. Uh, so okay, by me okay. only listening to motivation, like it was like I didn't hear hip hop unless I was with one of my cousins or just right. in the crib by myself. You know what I'm saying? So now when you by your even okay, so now when oh. you by yourself, what is it? Just yo, motiva- yo. is motivational stuff most yo. of the time. My kids would tell you, son. I will. Yo, we happen to whip. My son works at Bush Gardens. We happen to we hop, we hop in the whip. He hops in the whip coming from work. He like he burned out or some shit. Motivational speaking, son. For real, that tell you, yeah. He gonna I'm, tell you how to get through this right if, now. If, yeah. If my daughter get in the car with two or three of her homegirls, I play something for females. You know what I'm saying? Cause you need to hear it. Hmm. So rather than playing rap and by me having the influence, I'm gonna play something powerful for you. So my my kids is my kids is friends listen to me. But I'm about to say, but are they going are they into it or are they like uh Well see it's it's different. I look at it like this. It's different if I show it to you than your dad show it to you. So because because oh, you talk about you talk about your kids' friends. Yeah, friends okay, yeah, even yeah. my kids like well see my kids' as friends influence them. True. You know what I'm saying? So if you so, influence them then it just comes back, back to the kids. I like you know that. What I'm like that. saying so yeah, I try to be a positive light to the kids that my kids are around. Mm-hmm. So that way it can all just brush off, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All work together. Yeah. But yeah, he's he's definitely the uh, he's one of the main reasons why I'm where I'm at, think how I think. You know what I'm saying? Definitely deprogramming. He raised good a good guy. man. Yeah, good guy. My parents together. Uh that's my mom and my dad, of course. Uh just cool parents. Uh supportive, uh loving. Um, they always looking out for me, you know, uh, even still to this day. I'm only child, so whatever I need, they always right, got me. Okay, like I said, okay. call my daddy today. Hey, pick Jay up for me if you can. Cool, got it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, they're the reason why I, uh, I hold family dear. You know, um, they just raised me right. You know what I'm saying? Took the time to raise me right. You know Do you feel like you were spoiled growing up because you were the only child? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm still spoiled. I mean, it's, listen, I'm, I'm only child is realistic. <laughs> like, I mean, anything I want. I mean, if, if I wanted something for real, even with me fighting, I still took, my dad got more money than me, yo. Like, mm-hmm. since I was young, he was smart investing. So like, me making, my dad make, I think, well, I can't say what he made, but he made over 100K retired. You know what I'm saying? Same. So like, yeah, but like, 
man, like that, that's that's the role model. Do he, do he got you on the same kind of path to? Yeah, annoyingly, yes, yes. Yo. You Nick said annoyingly, Cole, yo. Yeah. <laughs> is he just as much as he's into the motivational stuff? Is he in, is he just like yes, that with the finances and everything? Stop. Like no. uh, rich dad, poor dad, and all Listen, that. Listen, my dad, <laughs> my dad, yo, my dad will call me. He might call me this evening and be like, yo, did you see the insert I sent you? It might be on boxing. It might be on rich dad, poor dad. It might be on like uh, some kinesiology for muscles, a Mike Tyson interview. Still to this day, y'all, I, when I worked at the ship, I showed my homeboy like, yo, we be like four or five interviews, four or five videos, some of them motivation. He ain't never sending you no BS. Never. My dad don't play. Like he don't lie to you, he don't joke around. Uh, he advanced in the Navy for real because he, he, uh, he was about his stuff, for real. I mean, like, I mean, while everybody would like deployments and shit, that's where he advanced at. So all his deployments, he, he made rank, you know what I'm saying? Because he ain't going vacations, he ain't going guess out into the countries and all that. He don't have none. Mm-hmm. Straight business, so, yeah. <clears throat> huh. <laughs> Shakur Stevens, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this is Team Lamb, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's Lil Nick right there, and that's Sean. Uh, pretty much uh, Shakur and uh, Keyshawn from here. Mm-hmm. Well, not from here, but you know, they lived here. So uh, mm-hmm. whenever they would be here, uh, they would come to the gym and show love. Um, they were just getting some work. I wound up being just, so when we were younger, like I said, I was kind of like an OG to the younger people. So just them being younger, you know what I'm saying? Uh, them getting some work, I would just come in, say what's up to them, talk to them, uh, try to be influenced while they were young, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So um, that's why we was all together, trying to get Shakur some work. This is like, man, they were like 16, 17. They, nobody even knew them back then. How old? You know about how old were you? Uh, they were like 16, 17, so I might have been like 21, 22 in this picture. You spar with them? Uh, nah, 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 they too small. I'm 240. They like 135, the biggest. Like, God. Nah, 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 yeah. We never. But nah, man, we used to just try to, you know, get together on the weekends. Uh, like, like, this is Saturday morning, you know. Okay. Try to get together and just influence some of the fighters that, you know, that might be in town, you know. Mm-hmm. So, that's what we're doing out here on these. Would you ever, you think you ever start like a boxing gym or anything? Oh, yeah. We're about to do a vintage, too. Hmm. So the gym that's out here, we about to do a joint. You know what I'm saying? So is this your gym or is this what well, you talk about franchising it? So the owner's not here right now. Okay. But um, Eric is the owner of the gym. Um, showing City Love, I seen them about to have a fight out here. And I'm like, shit, like, let me holler at them. You know what I'm saying? Like, put the fighters from Richmond on. Mm-hmm. I wound up just coming here a couple of months ago just on some, like, let me check y'all out, show love, because y'all in Richmond. Right. And uh, wound up seeing the gym was like, yo, like, I can have camp here. I ain't got to go to D.C. no more. I ain't mm-hmm. got to go to Baltimore no more. So uh, mm-hmm. this is kind of like, like, like a complete place. They got all the recovery I need, all the, all the coaching I need. So, you know, I ain't got to go no more. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? And that's what this is. <laughs> like, uh, this picture's here. Um, this is some of the kids that, like I said, even to this day, this kid right here was getting, he's an amateur. Uh, he was getting ready for a competition this weekend. So I told him and his coaches to come to the gym, you know what I'm saying, and, and we'll help him get ready for the fight. Uh, so, you know, he wound up not fighting the guy that he was going to fight, actually wound up dropping out. So he was state champion without even having to fight. Hell yeah. But, um, now, yeah. How often does that happen in, in boxing or in any kind of fighting? Um, like you know? I said, that's why I turned pro. Uh, once you get a reputation or you can really work, some guys won't want to fight you. You know, so, um, I mean, it could be, a, it could be anything. They could have seen him training with us, whatever it was. But they didn't want to fight, you know, so they passed it up. Hmm. Yeah. But like community service, it's not really community service, but that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Somebody hit you up, hey, got a young boy, heavyweight, like he can, he can do something. You know what I'm saying? Come down to the gym, get some more, get, get this heavyweight experience from a pro aspect, mm-hmm. and it's going to carry on. So they came train with us for like two, three weeks before the fights. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. You ever, you ever pop up on a boxer just to, you know, just see what they about? All the time. What, yeah. You mean like me, me sparring them? Yeah, like if you you about to go in a match or just any, just like, you know. Just. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I roll up on somebody just, I mean, just to make sure they focus. Mm-hmm. Like, see, by me having a time, mm-hmm. I don't work. So, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I try to fill my time with positive shit. Right. So, like, you know, if, if you got something going on, kids need to see a, a product. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So what better way than to pull up? Hey, yo, you really training, you really working. So anytime I can pull up and, and, and kind of pick brains or whatever, I definitely do. In Newport News, uh, Mama's Boys and stuff is where I mostly do that, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, my mama, she named me, uh, Slugger, from her. Um, this was her, this was like that 50th anniversary of her and my grandfather, my mm-hmm. papa, but um, yeah, she didn't want to name me. Um, I was about to die as a kid, of course. Uh, 
First day I was behind the bathroom with my mom, they rushed to the hospital. She had two blood transfusions. They pretty much told my mom that, you know, like your son's gonna die. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so they called my grandma and was like, basically get up here. As a baby? Yeah. So I had a bowel movement inside my mom. She started feeling sick. So my uncle takes her to the hospital. When, when we get there, well, when they get there, she they're like, yo, like, too. yeah, like basically like, oh, I deposited your bloodstream. Damn. So they give her an emergency C-section, they take me out, and they go bring, get her to basically give her two blood transfusions. The first one didn't take, so they had to give her another one. Um, so they call my grandmother and my grandfather, like, hey, like, your daughter's gonna probably die, but your grandson's gonna definitely die. So pretty much get up here. You know, you can say your goodbyes basically before he, before he dies. So pretty much my grandmother and them get up there. <laughs> they're like, you can't go to the back. This is the 80s and shit. So she like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like my grand, when my daughter die, my grandson die. You know what I'm saying? I'm a pseudo old house. You know, back in the day, mm-hmm. this mother yeah. named after me. You know, yeah. like she, so they let her through. And um, she wound up rushing to me. They was about to send me to like uh, New Orleans, like on a Nightingale. And she was like, you can't die. You know what I'm saying? If you die, my, my daughter's going to want to die. Um, you gotta live. You gotta be a slugger, you gotta fight. Wild shit is like, instantly almost, my vitals shot up, mm-hmm. right? They unplugged me. Yo, they, like, I didn't have to fly to New Orleans or none of that shit, like, it's, it's crazy. My vitals just normalized. Uh, they put me in the incubator for like two months, and like, they would just come visit me every day. So like, yeah, like, uh, but I would only respond to like my grandmother and my mom's voices. Damn, that's so, wild. So yeah, yeah, like, it, I was there so long, and I guess it was like a miracle baby or whatever, like the doctors, the, the doctors and the nurses, they didn't want me to leave. So like, that was a whole nother situation, but like, yeah, like. Two questions, was your dad like, he was on deployment or something like that? Nah, just young, just, mm-hmm. you know, he was around. No, he won't, he won't do nothing bad, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, I mean, when you're a kid, you don't, he's just dad. Huh, this are regionals. Uh, this was a good time. You know what I'm saying? Two braids. <laughs> uh, basically, we in DC, that's twin Andy and Randy Brower from downtown. Um, he was like my team captain, you know what I'm saying? He was another one that believed in me. So uh, anytime that I fought, all three of us would always be there. Um, you know what I'm saying? I still talk to Andy all the time. His brother Pete got a gym in, in Hampton, like we, you know what I'm saying? We all still do it. So uh, this joint, I just won the regionals. Um, I think I knocked somebody out for this joint. Uh, I think I, I think this was the one where I stopped though, boy. They gave me the trophy and they gave me the uh, the, the best open fighter of the night. Um, and it was just a good time, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this was this was me just coming in. This was probably the first time I won a regional. First or second time I won a regional. So this is like, you know, on, on my upscale damage. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Fun time though, yo. These, these were good nights, good nights. One of the Golden Glove fights. Yeah, so. This is, uh, they gave me the trophy, they gave me, the, they gave me, this was a Golden Glove necklace. Okay. Then they gave me the Golden Glove trophy, they gave you a bag and all of that. So this, that's the actual necklace. So if you win Golden Gloves, you know what I'm saying, they, they, give, you the, they, they give you the hardware. Ah, yeah. uh, my brother-in-law, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is my brother-in-law. Um, he's a suicide victim, you know what I'm saying. Uh, Sorry to hit up. Yeah. Um, Good father and things of that nature, just, you know, um, unfortunate events, you know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, he taught me a lot of stuff growing up. Uh, by me being married to his sister, him being older, you know, uh, he gave me my first big paying job. I think I was making like a thousand a week, twelve hundred a week, you know, working for Verizon through him, you know what I'm saying? We did underground excavation. Uh, he had his own company for him, so I wound up running a division for Verizon at 19. Uh, he was working for us as a contractor. Yeah, I, I did like, so all the 757, any files from downtown to uptown, all that, like I ran that whole division when I was a teenager. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, upbringing, my dad, my mom, you know what I'm saying? Just how, how we was raised and operated, you know what I'm saying? So uh, they always thought I was older than what I was, so they wanted to give me the keys to the city. Uh, I had like the whole 757, but he was like the main excavator for us. But um, he just taught me a lot about life, man. I can call him every day, talk to him about a lot of stuff. Um, I'm the only child, so he was like a big brother. Right. You know, yeah, good guy, though. Know. Uh, taught me a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying? Spent a lot of time with him. You know what I mean? uh, Yada, that's my, that's Coach Dula's son. Um, Kenyatta Walker, downtown too. Um, me and him were super close, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's my big bro. He died a couple of years ago, um, natural causes, but uh, yeah. 
this was a fight in DC. This was like my comeback fight. I had lost to, I had lost to um, Michael Hunter. Came back. I wound up paying for this fight uh, just to see if I could, you know, still do it. I wound up getting a knockout, but he came out to support me. You know what I'm saying? Um, told me it was a comeback fight. He said he'd be there. He pulled up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, got the win. Went home. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, he just always tried to be there for me. When his dad died, he just we just got super close. I literally would be at his house pretty much every, like seriously pretty much every morning. Like, you know what I'm saying? Talk in the morning and then I go to the gym. So yeah, you know, family rooted, family rooted. Uh, Mr. Jones, security guard, you know what I'm saying? Uh, by me just fighting at Woodside. Uh, <laughs> um, like I said, I wasn't a bad kid, so it'd be like, like you're the one that's causing all this shit, you know what I'm saying, all this trouble. So guys like Mr. Jones, Mr. Holmes, uh, Mr. Van, they would always look out for me, you know, uh, by me not being a bad kid. My dad was a neighbor recruiter too at my school. Mm. Like all four years of high school, my dad was a neighbor recruiter at school. So like, you know, Mr. But Jones. But you were still getting in the fights. Yeah, man. Hey, yo, so. what, what, what is Pop saying? Huh? As you get into these fights, what is Pop saying? Yo, you know what, yo? For real, for real. Um, I actually told him, shit, yesterday. Cause he was like, yo, what Jalen gonna do? I was like, you know what, yo? I'm like, now nah, I see exactly what you be talking about when I was younger. I was like, you had to be running around here, like scratching your head, like what the fuck is this boy gonna do? Cause it's like, all of his own was fighting. Like for real, you know what I'm saying? Fighting is just chilling, having kids. So it's like, <laughs> like, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what you, like, you just fighting and having kids, bro. Like, so, you know what I'm saying? It, uh, it played a part. The reason why Mr. Jones is actually in my heart. So he started being a security guard at my kids' at school. Watched out for him every day. Every day. Uh, no matter what. Uh, he'll call me. Hey, 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 I got him. Yeah. <laughs> I come up to school, yo, Mr. Jones be like, hey, you know what I'm saying? I put him there. Yeah, I wouldn't get, you know what I'm saying, Jalen out of class. This is when they all went to the same uh, elementary school. Yeah. I wouldn't get Jalen out of class for y'all already. I can call Mr. Jones up like, yo, hey, hey. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming to get the boys. Yo, where you at? You know what I'm saying? He'll walk up to me. Hey, these my, I got them, yo. I got So, you know, special guy. Special guy to the city. Special yeah. guy to the city. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Good guy. I want to go back to the picture that, uh, before that, and I want to just ask you about your first loss. Because you said that was, oh, that was on your comeback. So, yeah. Talk about your first loss. Shh, man, I had it all, man, I had it. I had it mapped out for me for real. Uh, by me being one of the top amateurs, it was almost like a sleeper. Fighting for Golden Boy. Matter of fact, <laughs> shit. Gerald Washington just lost this weekend to Anthony Joshua. Gerald Washington is who I lost my first fight to. Hmm. Um, like, I was supposed okay. to pretty much knock Gerald Washington out, um, get a Golden Boy contract, and get an Al Hammond contract. Okay. Uh, they sent me all his like videos, it went to my head. I was seven and oh seven knockouts. Mm. Um, like I said, I'm talking, I'm talking to Al Heyman on the phone. I'm talking to like Robert Gomez, that's like the CEO of Golden Boy. They're like, yo, after you dust him off, like that's how, that's how they talk. And they're like, yo, yeah. once you dust him, <laughs> like, yo, like we got two contracts for you, it's done. Like you, you're gonna be good. Mm -hmm. So I, I walk up to the fight sleeping on him. My, the first round, I'm bullshitting. I'm like, oh, he's scared of me. I remember sitting down in the corner. My coach is telling me something. Yo, to this day, it's like my biggest regret. Coach Lamb, coach from the pitchers. Biggest regret. I'm like, yo, I got this, yo. Like, yo, man, I'm about to knock him out, yo. Not listening to him. Second round, catch me on the chin. The week before, I had got all four of my wisdom teeth pulled. You ain't even supposed to fight for six months. That's how cocky I was, yo. <laughs> like, yeah, like, like the surgeon is like, yo, I would not even. Come on. Yeah, tell, tell, tell me what happened. Come on. Yeah, that, that's how he caught me. Like, so your, your, your jaw is weak as it's ever going to be for six months after you get your wisdom teeth pulled. Wow, yeah. But once you get them pulled, it's going to be the strongest after the duration. I'm like, nah, I'm good. He like, hit you. You damn near passed out, there. Yeah. Like, he caught me, and it was just like everything just went, yo. Never been knocked God. out, knocked down. Like, God. yeah. Yeah, like, hard-headed. Oh, this is my papa. So this is, you know, my, my mom's dad. Um, he making boudin. Matter of fact, oh damn, they ain't there. Well, I just gave some of the some of the people in the gym the other day some boudin. Long story short, but um, what is boudin? Nah, my grandpa. Uh, it's like a sausage and casing. Uh, oh, like the in the ball thing. Yeah, like the boudin yeah. balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Jones doesn't be out here for any nasty. 
Okay. That's that's. I, I want but, you. I'm good to hear. But yeah, but it's the same thing though. Right. But actual Buddha is actually in the in the casing. Okay. Uh, Buddha and balls is like something newer that they came with afterwards. Uh, but yeah, my grandfather. Uh, we just here in Louisiana. I mean, we here in Virginia. They would come down every uh, holiday. So he just here. Uh, and we making making Buddha and making making food. They kill everything in Louisiana. Like so, we got slaughterhouses and stuff in Louisiana. Yeah. So like my even my freezer now, we don't really buy meat from here. We go home, we get our shit from the slaughterhouse, and we come back. You know what I'm saying? Like out there, you can get a cow, a pig, and all do you, that. Do have you ever? Do you go hunting? I I don't. I don't. I'm not. I'm not a person to prey on the week. You know? Do you cook? I I feel I'm the best cook that I know. Like so, after all of this is done with boxing and shit, that's what. Bro, that's what we, we gonna out there. We gonna out this there. Was, I do, I do a little show myself yeah, now, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I cook better than any, um, like last week. Last week, my mom was like, "When I'm done boxing, she's like, you should go to culinary school." So, uh, mm. but that's what we that's what we plan on doing. Like after all this is over, we plan yeah. on opening a restaurant. Type Hell yeah! Thing. Yeah, what we'll kind? What like favorite cuisine? Oh, Louisiana, Lu- oh, Louisiana uh, Creole. Cuisine. Creole. Like we have the best cooks in the world, in my opinion. So, do you go to Charleston a lot? That's like that's considered like the Carolina. Food. Yeah, well, it's more Geechee, but it's the same. It's the same sedative. You know what I'm saying? Us Caribbean. It's all. Yeah. It's all Islander food. You know okay. what I'm saying? But I don't think that they can cook like us, honestly. God, hey, look, man. I, I just, don't see it. I, that's just me, though. I mean, you got it, if you the got best it. cooks, if the best cooks in the world came from somewhere else, then they would say it. Look, I'm just, they say <laughs> the best cooks in the world come from Louisiana. I, I ain't gonna argue with you. Uh, Sweet Pea, uh, this is my guy. Um, we spent a lot of time uh, before he died. Uh, he would come to the gym, check me out. He wanted to sign me right before he died. The day before he died. Me and my coach had, had, a, had a contract for him to speak at Virginia State University. And uh, we talked to him the night before, you know what I'm saying, tell him he was going to pick him up the next day and uh, take, him to, take him to VSU. And uh, that was like the last time we talked to him, you know what I'm saying? Um, we hung up, you know what I'm saying, and, uh, and he passed away that night. Uh, but nah, he was monumental to the area. Um, when I say somebody that you can see in touch, you know, Sweet Pea was a guy that, could, that you could see in touch. He came to my first pro fight in D.C. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, he spazzed out on me there, but you know what I'm saying? Um, why, why, why did he? He cursed me out, yo. Uh, <laughs> Cause he's a Pan Am game winner, an Olympian. I won National Golden Glove. So when I'm telling him National Golden Glove winner, he just like, the fuck is that, bro? Like literally, like. Compared to what he's done. Yeah, yeah. he like, motherfucker, yeah. like, he like, you're a Golden Glove winner. He like, he like, you know I won the Pan Am games, right? The Olympics. He like, I got a gold medal. And that's what, like, I will say, he's the person that made me realize, like, yo, it's love us to this. Like, cause my outlook on making it and his outlook on making it was like, nah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm doing something. He like, nah, like, like, so, like where I was, like, that's doing something. So I thought athletes they showed me levels. Do you think an athlete's purpose is to try to make it to the Olympics? Is that what you feel like? That's what the money athlete. is. That's what the money is. For you, boxing, uh, you're a gold medalist, mm-hmm. and you come to the pros, or you making like 50, 50k a fight, in your first fight, mm-hmm. like for real. Like I said, La Jolla made like six hundred million in boxing. Like Floyd had to work for that. Oscar was a Oscar was a gold medal winner, like for real. Yeah. Well, in, in this kind of sport, like that's why he came out on top. Like gold medal, yeah. You got to think like that's for us. That's number one. That's that's so. Basketball is just in, the, in America. So, you know what I'm saying? You first round draft, you might get some money, but it ain't like that. Nah, like when you win the Olympics, you just beat everybody in the world. Like mm-hmm. everyone in the world in your weight class. Mm-hmm. So whoever you sign to, nah, it's different. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, them cats made like 800 mil in boxing. Like, damn. You like doing flips. Oh, Talk shit. to me about this. Uh, this is like a symbol for my home. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's kind of like a commemoration to Louisiana, uh, where I come from. Um, a lot I, of people can't I damn near thought the picture was Photoshop for real. Nah, nah. Um, after my fights, I do it in the ring. So mm-hmm. after my fights, I do it in the ring, take the flip, you know what I'm saying? But uh, this is just for my hometown, just showing them that, you know okay. what I'm saying, I'm here and I do it for us, you know what I'm saying? So this is, this is a real commemoration of us just uh, going through, you know, what we go through. Mm-hmm. So I know when people back home see my fights, like they're inspired, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's what it's about, yo. Okay. That, that's what this joint is about. This is uh, after the Franklin fight, I don't know, 2019, I think. Um, this, this was different. Um, basically, if you don't sign with a promoter, you don't get the win. Um, I chose not to sign with the promoter. Uh, I beat Jermaine Franklin, you know what I'm saying? 
they gave him the fight. Uh, that's why I wound up signing with a guy like Luda Bella. He called me in the ring, was like, yo, you should have won that fight. Uh, we were talking ever since. Um, still talk to him now, you know what I'm saying? Still my promoter. So he believed in me. He seen what I did with Jermaine Franklin. He knew it was a setup. He knew how boxing worked. So uh, he said he wanted to help me out. Uh, you know, do right by me, give me some right runs. So, you know, that's when I started teaming up with Lou. But yeah, this was this this kind of sucked. I, I didn't really care about it. It's kind of like I know who I am. So when lose the draw, if I, if I know I won, everybody know I won it. It ain't really affect me at all. For real. I slept like a baby that night, honestly. Like it, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So ain't no temperament. So before you go, before you flip the next, um, I want to ask like, what's next for Jerry Force? Um, this fight here, um, September 15th. After that. We're gonna definitely do um, December and probably January, February, have another big fight. Do you already have it mapped out who you're boxing? When, so when you're at the level that I'm at, for real, you can kind of just go back into it whenever you want and just kind of, you know what I'm saying? So like, I'm just getting the two wins to kind of solidify and uh, just get back into it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, at any time I could still fight Joshua, you could still fight Mansoor. I mean, it's a lot of guys out there, so right. you know, um, Anybody who's who's like at the top of your list that you're like hoping up? I don't even be caring, for real. Like, boxing is so crazy. I can't say some things, because you just can't, but uh, just, man, the top guys just, man, it just be crazy. That's all I can say. You know what I'm saying? Like, How's your trash talking? I don't really talk trash, yo. Just kind of like, just do the work? Yeah, I kind of always, not the baddest motherfucker on the earth type shit, but like, I kind of always knew I could fight since I was a kid, so it's kind of like uh, we play basketball. I mean, it's just kind of like you can't beat me. That's it. It ain't, it ain't really like a lot of. I don't do a lot of back and forth. Like you pretty much, you can't beat me. <laughs> I mean, when it when it comes to two men, mm -hmm. once you can't beat me, there's nothing else to really converse about, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so you know what I'm saying? That's kind of that's why I got to all them fights. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> I want to leave it here. I think we're in a good spot. Um, fight September 15th. September 15th. Rick Media Pass is definitely going to be in the building. Um, and we actually want to do an interview with you after that fight. So Let's that's going to be a great place to bring this back in and, you know, continue what we got going on. Let's go. All Let's right. Go. Let's do so, it. Media Pass, there y'all have it. Jerry Forge, look out for the fight September 15th. Y'all tune in. Let's go. Let's Media go, baby. Pass TV, baby. Let's do this.